Uh, good morning, everybody. Hello, my name is Tom. I'm from Vectorworks. Uh, my background is a touring chief electrician for theatre and opera. I've been with Vectorworks for about five years. Um, today's presentation is about drawing schematics in Vectorworks. So AV stuff, uh, rack design, and even like custom panel design as well. Okay. Before we get going, can I see a show of hands? How many people use Vectorworks at the minute? Okay, cool. Of those people, how many people have heard of ConnectCAD? How uh, those people use ConnectCAD at the minute? Okay, cool. All right, great. This will be very relevant. Excellent. Cool. So um, I'll just introduce ConnectCAD a little bit. It started in 2012. Uh, it was developed as an external third-party application by Conrad Preen. Uh, we purchased it from Conrad about three years ago now, and he now works for us, so he still develops it. The whole program has been completely rebuilt. And it can be used in a live entertainment context, but it's all, it's really beneficial for kind of um, systems integration and really like in-depth uh, architectural projects as well as entertainment ones. So let's talk a little bit about schematics then. So the first thing about creating schematics in ConnectCAD will be to create devices. And there's three different ways to do that uh, in ConnectCAD. There is a device database. So if I just switch to my device tool set for a second, and I'm going to grab my device builder tool. So this is a generic device builder. It is also accessing a library of around 3,000 devices. But think of this as a way of building a device you don't currently have. So you can specify the number of inputs and outputs on a device. Uh, you can also tell it what the physical dimensions of the device is. Now, this, this isn't the size of the square that gets drawn. ConnectCAD is clever enough so that once you've drawn a schematic, it will then generate all of the actual objects for the stage design for you. So it will draw the speakers in for you. And if you have symbols, it will use symbols. And if you have, don't have that content, it will create parametric um, cubes for you for the speakers. So you can customize the device in here. Uh, it's also possible to have a virtual device, so a device that's maybe like a virtual patch. It doesn't need to live in a rack. It has no corresponding equipment item. Um, every time you make a new device in the device builder, it will write it to the library. Now, that library can also be shared amongst you if there's a team of people who are using the product. So you can kind of begin to create this library. Think of the device builder as a recipe book for creating devices. Because once you have your devices existing, you can then use the other device tool, which basically can access your own custom library, which you can share. And you can place devices as singular objects, or you can place a distributed array of devices as well. So it's very fast. However, it may be quite clunky to create all of your devices slowly. So there's also an automated feature where you can tell ConnectCAD um, where your devices live at the moment. So maybe they're in a spreadsheet or an equipment list. And they can be in kind of like columns, quantities, or they can be information like this, which also contains the room and the rack that gets created as well. So I'm going to tell it which fields correspond to which rows. And this will automatically generate all of the devices I need for this project. OK, let's pop these over here. So there you go. So it's actually just created these from the list. And you'll notice I can then rearrange this, and I can get the circuit tool, and I can kind of start plugging stuff in. We'll come to that in a moment. But I just want to draw to your attention at this moment in time that we've also got uh, weight information, location. So we've got room. So this is in the OB truck, and it's on the desk in the OB truck. So because this information exists in the device, later on when we create the objects, uh, we create the equipment items, it's going to actually populate all of these equipment items into their correct corresponding rooms. Cool. So that is creating devices. Again, there's three different ways to do that. There's also just a very simple device tool where you can just insert additional sockets onto the device, like so. So it's very quick and easy to customize. And you'll also notice that the device itself doesn't have that many parameters available. So it's possible to tell it you know, what kind of device it is, its physical, its weight, and its wattage. But um, you can add an unlimited number of custom parameters to any device. And those parameters can then be collated in a spreadsheet and edited in here, so anything at all. 
And the device itself, you can also just type any kind of placeholder text within the device. And once you've created the placeholder text, oh, that's so tiny. Bear with me one second. There we go. You can then map that text to display a particular field. So I would like to link that to, for example, the description or the make or the model or anything at all. So kind of displaying that information is really, really simple. In this case here, I've also got things like IP address information available on these devices as well. So um, the thing to remember here is that every device, once you place it on the document, is an instance, OK? So they're no longer symbols. They're not really like symbols or blocks. They are now unique entities, which can make updating them tricky. So if you move sockets or if you customize them in any way, you might think, well, how do I then make these other devices like the one that I've just edited? So that with the device tool, there is a eyedropper mode, which I can just pick up. So I can pick up this and apply it to the others. So it's very easy to customize lots of devices in a drawing. I can also create a script which selects all of those devices of a particular type and swap them out with the same command. So I placed all my devices on my schematic. So the next thing to talk about would be um, beginning to circuit them up. Now, there is an automated circuiting feature, which I will show you at the end. Uh, but you can use the circuit tools. You can also select devices and just um, select the connect CAD command, uh, select connected devices. But I'm just going to show you the circuit tool for now. So I'm going to use the multi-circuit mode. I'm just going to say, well, this console here, let's just connect this console to this console. We'll just map all the ins and outs from one to the other. Okay. Uh, and obviously, when you then remove the device, the circuits remain connected. And it's also possible to tidy up and reroute some of these circuits. So if I want to, it's very hard to see which one's which here. So if I just grab the reroute tool, I can click and hold, and I can just drag to the side and let go. And that's just going to make it much easier and clearer to read the path. There's also a couple of different types of this. So I can say, well, let's have a nice rounded polyline or a chamfered line, or my favorite, you can just use an arrow connector. So this would be good for things like fly-offs, etc. In terms of the information that gets displayed around the arrow connector, it's also possible to customize everything in terms of the device and the circuits. So if we look at the default circuit graphics, I could also get it to include things like which room that it goes to, which rack it's plugged into, which amp channel it's plugged into. So all of that information can then be added into that arrow connector label. OK, so that is the circuiting tools. There's also an adapter tool as well. So it, and they, all of these things as well can be collated in a separate list. So if I just grab my adapter tool, I can choose a specific adapter to use and just literally just insert it straight onto the socket. I can also interrupt it and place it in line of an existing connection as well. That's fine as well. So you can place adapters. They can be counted. The adapters themselves can also have multiple sockets. So in this case, we have an adapter with multiple outputs, like so. So there's a couple of different ways to produce card-based or modular-based schematics. This is one of the ways you can do this. So essentially, you can have an adapter object as each of the cards. There's also an additional way, which I'll show you in a moment, where you can just create multiple devices within a device. So these adapters then, once they live on the schematic, everything in ConnectCAD has a corresponding 3D element. So if I just click on uh, Edit Adapter Slots, let's make a, take a second or two to load. There we go. It's the first time I've switched to a 3D view, so it'll be caching itself. OK, cool. Whoops. There we go. Oh, this is very sensitive today. Right. So uh, let's have a look at the back of some of the equipment. So what you'll see here is there is an adapter slot tool. So if I switch to the second tool set and choose the adapter slot tool, there we go. So it's possible to add adapters onto the back of modules. And you can add them in an array form. And you can also tell the adapters which corresponding socket of the device they respond to. So then this information will then get displayed on the back of the 3D object. And this may seem like, well, what's the purpose of this? You know, um, you can generate 2D elevations of these racks with these sockets labeled 
quite easily with the Create Rack Elevation command, which I'll show you shortly. So there's one way to do modular equipment and adapters. And so the schematics all have a corresponding 3D equipment item, which we'll come to in a second. Before we leave the schematic workflow for a moment, there's a couple of things to talk about. So ConnectCAD uh, is actually monitoring what you're doing, which sounds a bit sinister, but it's really just there to help. So what we have here is a ConnectCAD status. So this is new for 2025. So this is actually monitoring the things that you're doing in the drawing, and it's just making a note of the things that you might need to go back and fix. So for example, the duplicate name of this object, lighting device is missing the channel information, and it's possible to highlight this by literally just clicking, like so, and then I can you know, switch to the next issue if there's more equipment that correspond to that. So it's incredibly powerful. You can turn this off. Um, it also works in conjunction with the check drawing command, which will annotate the drawing with some of these issues, and it will tell you where your mistakes are and things that you need to fix. So it's incredibly powerful and very smart. It's going to clear the mark up for a second. You can also get it to do your own custom workflows. So um, I can obviously assign different line colors and line thicknesses to my circuits. And I can do that automatically by rules, a bit like layers in AutoCAD. I can also, if I just have a quick look uh, at the data visualization tool, it can make drawing schematics difficult. If you have to have them one color, for the schematic, but actually you, you know, visually, you might find it easier to view them in a different color. So you can create what's called a data visualization, which is basically where you apply this to any object with any data. So it could be devices, it could be circuits. And you say, well, I wish you to um, select any devices using a particular parameter. And it could be um, signal type, for example. So if I were to say, well, let's look at the circuit object. And then let's list all the signal types that we have in this document. Thank you. And then we can get it to color stuff in, which is great. Or we could also just highlight the signals that have not been defined and color them in red so that we can then visually see which signals we need to define. So if I then turn some of these data visualizations on, um, there we go, signal or signals in color, I think it's called. Cool it will automatically color the circuits in. And this can be toggled on and off, and it can also be assigned to just a specific viewport or thing that you want to print off. So that's data visualization, and that's across all Vectorworks products, not just ConnectCAD. It's really, really powerful. So um, the next thing we'll look at before we look at equipment items is creating panels. So there is a, a various set of uh, connector tools. So let's have a look down here for a second. So if I look at the Create Panel workflow, so over here on the schematics tool, I can use connector panels, jack fields, etc., and I can create multiples and multiple arrays of panel connectors, which I can then interact with the circuit tool. And once I've created those, I can then select the panels on a drawing. So let me pop back for a second. And I can run a command called create panel view, which I've already done in this file. So I'll just show you where this is located. Um, what this enables you to do is it enables you to choose which one of the manufacturer's products you wish to use for the panels. So option one is you can use these pre-built panels. Option two is you can also design your own custom panels as well, which we'll look at shortly. So once, once I select Create Panel View, effectively this is what it makes. And what you'll notice here is if I double click and edit the panel, each socket is also displaying what cable is plugged into it. And uh, you can also add things like where it goes. So each of these individual socket symbols uh, have uh, specific tags, which you can map to data fields of that object. You can also use this to create CNC panels and any custom panels you need to make. There is also a panel builder. I'll just switch to this for a second. And I'll just go to, let's create a quick panel with this object. Uh, cancel that. So with the panel builder, I can make my own one from scratch. And I can tell it to make graphics, whether it's rack mountable, how many rack use it fills, and which sockets it uses. Now, whenever you see these connector types, these are whatever images or graphics you wish to use. So if you don't like these, you can customize these and use your own. And it will generate these panels for you. 
Once you've created a panel, you can then make it as a style. So it means you can reuse it again and again on future projects. And these panels can then be created uh, into viewports, which you can look at on sheets as well. And also, each of them will then have a corresponding 3D panel as well, which they can go to. So I can see here that that, that panel is located in that particular rack. So we'll just talk a little bit about modular kit again. So you can also have talk, mentioned devices. Um, you can also have devices within a device, uh, as well as adapters. Um, when it comes to the 3D rack for these objects, there we go. So it's possible to put these objects in what we call a rack frame. So as you can see here, I've got these cards, and these cards are all mounted inside this rack frame object. And these rack frames are modular. Um, you can tell them how many ins and outs you need. So if I just move this for a second, I'll create a quick copy. So you can tell it how many vertical and how many horizontal slots you need to create a matrices for a device. So as you can see here, you can also just make it a tray. So you know maybe it's, um, it's not uh, a frame, it's a tray. So I'll just switch that up here. There we go. So everything is what we call parametric, which is a, basically a word Vectorworks uses for it's editable, it's adjustable, you can resize things quite easily. Okay. So we've finished our schematic over there on, on the other layers of the document. So the next thing we do in this process is we can use the layout tool to just mark out some rooms. So if I just change uh, tool sets, I'll choose the room layout tool. And these can be 2D, like so, uh, but they can also be 3D, and they could also be polylines. So in this case here, I've got one which is my truck, like so. And I've also got one over here, which is my front of house control position. And the reason I've added all of these is so that I can run a command called Connect CAD Create Equipment, and it's going to draw all of the equipment that are on the schematic layer. It's going to put them inside these rooms where I have actually bothered to assign rooms to them. You can also get it to match the Vectorworks 3D symbol from the Vectorworks libraries. So if you have a 3D symbol for a QL5 or whatever, it will actually pull that symbol from the resource manager. So if I click OK, anything that I have correctly assigned um, will be created. Any stuff that there are errors, it's not going to let me create, or it's going to give me the choice. Vectorworks will never ever make duplicates of anything. It's clever enough to know which schematic item you've got and which equipment item it corresponds to, and there will only ever be one of them. But as you can see here is in the OB truck, it's created the equipment I needed in this rack automatically. The equipment is parametric, and it knows how many U heights it is. It's kind of, you know, it's dumped the desk in a really strange place. Um, but I could then obviously move that onto the table if I want to. And then I could then say, well, that is actually a QL5. I'll just change that out. So these equipment items, um, if they don't pick up a symbol, you can also map them to a symbol. So if I say that's a QL5, don't think I'm actually, oh, there it is. There we go, cool. So that is now that actual sound desk, which is on the floor, but you get the idea. I could then tidy that up. There it is, okay. Cool. So um, every piece of equipment in here has a corresponding schematic piece of equipment. So if I, I've selected my sound desk over here, if I say, well, where are you on the schematic? I can say edit schematic device, and there it is. So it's going to take me to where it is. So everything is linked. And that is creating rooms and equipment items. Now, it may be that you have imported a file from Revit, for example. So we support loads of different file formats. You can import Revit files, you can reference them, DWGs, AutoCAD files, MVRs. This list is really exhaustive and long. So if your architect you're working with, if you're doing more of a systems integration workflow, maybe your architect has um, used the IFC spaces tool you know, and has created a designated space in there. So these spaces, when imported into ConnectCAD in 2025, so it's out in 10 days, they will also be used as Connect CAD rooms as well. So if you have an existing 3D model from an architect, the equipment will also move itself into the correct room. So uh, obviously, there was a lot of equipment that we created, which just got dumped at zero, zero, because I had not assigned it to a rack. So if this happens, um, you can then just manually create a rack. So let's just have a quick look at the rack builder tool. Uh, let me just grab that. 
So again, these are parametric, so I can just say, well, I want um, the rack. There we go, use the right tool. I'm gonna say, well, this one is an enclosure or a four post rack. And I'm gonna say, let's 12 rack use high, like so. And then I can just drag and drop equipment into this rack, like so. And as I move equipment into the rack, I can then have a look at the equipment on the schematic and it will also then display and update on here which rack and which room it's in. So as you can see here, it's in my unnamed rack, but it's in rack U8, okay? And again, you can go the other way as well, so I can select edit equipment and take me back to the rack. So you can also build these manually. Now, once you've finished putting your rack together, you can select a rack. I'm gonna choose a slightly more interesting one. There we go. So I've, here's a rack I made earlier. And again, some of these equipment items, I've used some actual photos for the equipment fronts, so you can do that as well. And you can run a command called um, create rack elevation. And this is basically creating that 2D graphic of our racks. So let's put them on there. Let's create a graphic of the front and the rear of the rack. There we go. Just select those. And I'm gonna scale these. So I'm gonna say they can be one to five. There we are, and I just need to update them. So I'm gonna position them on my sheet. Over here, over there. And I just need to click update because they're essentially a viewport. Okay, so then yeah, so this is how you can begin to present some of your work. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment. But these are effectively viewports. So as we make changes to the rack in the design layer, these are gonna automatically update for us in the background. And you can see the front and rear of these racks here. Okay, so one other thing just about the equipment item stuff. So we talked a bit about how do you get it to use a specific symbol. What if you've already drawn some things in Vectorworks uh, using the Vectorworks tools? So maybe you've drawn a speaker array, maybe you've drawn some speakers, some video screens, a projector tool, for example. Let me just go and find the projector on my schematic tool for a second. There we go. So that equipment item tool um, can be used to tag an existing uh, plugin object. Okay, so I can grab the equipment item and I say, well, there it is. And it effectively becomes linked by the name field as well. So as you can see there's one already on here. And then by having the same name as the equipment object, it then knows which corresponding schematic device it belongs to. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about uh, cabling, okay? So we've drawn some circuits in on the schematic. You can tell it which uh, length of cable you want to use. So it's possible to display lengths in here. So let me just try and remember where it's moved to. Cable length, there we go. So you can customize this list as well. There's also an option called automatic, which basically is, means that you can ask ConnectCAD to calculate the cable lengths that you need for a particular job. And, there, and the way that you would do that is you would use the um, cable path tool, which is a bit like the conduit tool. Okay, so as you can see here, I have already drawn a cable path, which is just here. There we go. So again, these are 3D, but you know, I'll show you drawing these because they're fairly straightforward. Um, so if I just grab my cable routing tool, so you can put drop points in as well. So if you want to just put sockets in, for example, and things like that, just turn the classes on. So a, a drop point in ConnectCAD is really like a hole in the wall or like a port or a socket. Um, it, the equipment items themselves can be used in conjunction with the cable tools and the cable path tools so they know which ones you're connecting in the 3D space. Um, if I just grab the cable path tool for a second. There we go. So I can start from this drop point, go over here, and I can say, well, at this point, we're going to jump at three meters over a door frame, for example, and then jump back down again. And you can add your own custom heights in here as well. There we go. So there's my cable path, like so. Let's have a quick look at that in 3D. There it is. Perfect. Lovely. So once you've drawn your cable paths, and again, you don't have to do this. You know, some people might just use ConnectCAD to draw a schematic, and that's fine. Um, but if you're doing installations, there's, these are quite powerful because these are effectively uh, conduits. So you can give them a designated width and ConnectCAD knows how thick your cables are that you want to run through these paths. And it will automatically reroute these for you as you need to. 
So if I use the edit cabling tool and tell it which cables I want to run through here, I can say, well, can you just put in 12 network cables? Like so. There we go. And if I click Add, I can then get these into a worksheet as well. You'll notice they've automatically populated the drop points as the ID. Click OK. And it will generate some spare circuits for me that I can then use on the schematics layer. So if I'm on my schematics layer, I just head over there. And let's have a look. Worksheets. So I can effectively assign a circuit on that layer. There you go. Where have you gone? There you go. In here. Cool. So if I choose an existing circuit, I can then, in this dialog, tell it exactly which cable I wish to use, um, which is, let's have a look. I'm not used to this screen size. Automatic metric cable type. No. OK. Well, effectively, I can assign it in here. Forget exactly where it is. Anyway, let's keep going. So if I head over back to the cable paths, um, I can then run a command over here called Calculate Cable Lengths. And this will basically understand which pieces of equipment are connected to which drop points, and again, which cable paths are running between those drop points. And then it will work out exactly how much cable you need for this particular job. OK. So I'll just head back to uh, a sheet for a moment. There's one other feature as well, which is coming in 2025, that would be really good to show you. And that's called the Reports Share. So in 2024, we announced the ability to publish information from Vectorworks to technicians on site using um, the app, for example, OK? Or it could be that they're just using um, a web browser. You know, it's not device specific at all. So just let me head over to here. There we go. OK. So you can share a QR code, which will give people access to the document. And if you make any changes to the schematic in Vectorworks, you can just simply update the shared report, and it will push the information to all the engineers who are out in the field. And now, in 2025, engineers on site can annotate that information, and that information can then come back into Vectorworks onto the sheet layer of the designer who's using the software. And then they can see the notes that the engineers are writing on. The engineers can't change anything. They're effectively just adding annotations. But it's pretty useful. So the last thing I thought would be good to show you would be some of the more automated features that it does in terms of comparing uh, cable lists and drawings. So if I just open up this worksheet for a second, again, everything in ConnectCAD, uh, it knows what's connected to what. And as you can see here, this is just a worksheet which is effectively um, uh, just what we're looking at here is just the schematic here, these uh, Dante interface plugging into a sound desk. And what we can see here is it's telling us which ins go into which outs. And it's possible to edit this sheet. OK, so you can then uh, edit this information. And then you can do two things with this. Firstly, you can ask ConnectCAD to show you what the difference is. So if we were to just say, um, uh, list, compare cable list and drawing, it will basically highlight all of the things that are different. So as you can see here, let me just turn on some classes so I can see the labels. There we go. So it's basically detected that these things are not in the list. So 1 and 2 and 11 and 12 are swapped. So what I can do here is I can effectively ask ConnectCAD to redraw the schematic, but correctly. So I can just say, uh, make connections from list. And I can choose the same list. And it's going to add those new connections in. So if you have a list of equipment and a list of the patch, it's possible to get ConnectCAD to generate the schematic for you from the worksheets. OK, so that kind of brings us to the end of the ConnectCAD presentations. And we've got specific questions about ConnectCAD or workflows. I know we've covered loads and we've gone through very quickly. So happy to revisit anything slower in more detail. What kind of questions do you have? Go on, somebody. Yep, just down here. Hi, yeah. So for creating cable routes, is yeah. that able to incorporate stuff like the fact that you've got motors and rigging heights and swag lengths in that? 
Hi, Kirsch. I can hear you a bit better now. Cool. Yeah, so the question was, um, you've all got headphones on. You've heard it. It's fine. Okay. So there's two cable tools, right? Um, ConnectCAD has a cable tool. But if it's, if it's stuff that's on a truss, you could use the existing Spotlight cable tools. It's quite confusing because there's, there's two cable tools in Vectorworks. One of them is for ConnectCAD, one of them is for Spotlight. Uh, we've actually just completely reworked the cable tools in Spotlight. So there were some issues with cable paths uh, and some of that functionality you describe, if you change the truss trim height, it used to break the cable connections in 2024. This doesn't happen in 2025. You can change the trim height of a truss and it knows which cable to run like. Um, there is a cable tool here, so I, I wouldn't use the paths for that. I would effectively use just this cable tool and I can choose a particular style of cable to use. So I've just got a 16 amp, for example. And this one, um, I can run wherever. I haven't got any truss in this project, I don't think. Um, let me just grab a, let me just switch workspaces for a second. Um, yeah, so you probably, you don't necessarily need ConnectCAD to do this. Um, the other thing that's interesting as well is that some of this functionality is coming to Spotlight. So it probably makes sense for me to show you that so you can, work out if it's worth buying ConnectCAD or not and what you get for it. So let me show you that. Um, so what we've, essentially what we've done is the guy that made ConnectCAD, Comrade, he has recreated the cable tools in Spotlight. Um, so there's lots of similarities and there's quite a lot of changes. So let me just change a save view over here for a second. Um, so top plan. So the existing cable tool, where's all the truss come? Turn that on. And just turn these classes on as well. There we go, cool. Um, yeah, so you'll notice if I select this cable tool, it will work and it will highlight the truss object. It will snap to it so I can, and then if I change that, then it will automatically um, adjust that in the background. Now, once you've run these cables in, so if you're plugging in lights or speakers, I think, um, but definitely lighting, you can run a command which is called create power schematic. And it's very new and I can't remember where it is, but I'll show you what it does. Um, there we go. There we go, cool. So it is located. So this would also work for hoists and things as well. So it's in spotlight cable power planning, create power schematic, and this is what it does. So without ConnectCAD, this is what you'll have in Spotlight in 2025. So as long as you've run all the cables in and use distributor objects, then it will automatically generate this. You can then edit this, uh, much like you would in ConnectCAD. And if you edit this and if you move any connections around, it will redraw the circuits in the design layer as well. The only other thing it'd be worth mentioning is there is a right-click command um, which we've added called create cable break. So if you select a cable in 2025, you can right click on it and create a break and it knows to put a break in the cable at that point. So it will work out the lengths that you need between those. Okay. Has anyone got any other questions about also what's coming in 2025 maybe? Not just ConnectCAD, Vectorworks in general. I'm just curious, that uh, QR code share report with engineers, could that be used to share lighting device information as well if you've... Not yet, but that's oh, yes. the plan. Yeah, that's works. the long-term okay. plan. The other thing ConnectCAD has got, which I haven't had a chance to put in this file, is it also has got a label designer in 2025. So if you want to design circuit labels or speaker labels or lighting device labels or hoist labels. So for now, it's just ConnectCAD, but we are rolling out the label designer to all of the other Spotlight objects. Anyone like to ask any other questions? Nope. Feel free to come and ask me at the end if you don't want to ask in front of everyone else. That's fine. But thanks for your time. Thanks very much.